What's up, Data Pipeliners? Welcome back to another episode on Writing Data Pipelines with Kedro. It's the first video of 2021, and I hope everyone had a wonderful holiday break. And today we're going to be talking about the Kedro 0.17.0 update that was released uh, a couple weeks ago. <laughs> but we were all on vacation, so no big deal. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Release 0.17.0. There's going to be a lot of really cool changes in this one. And we're just going to do a very quick overview on the things that have gone through, uh, as well as experiment with some of them. The most significant change that we have is the Kedro session object. This one is such a fantastic addition to the Kedro pipeline. What it does is it decomposes the dynamic variables and dynamic parameters that are passed into the Kedro pipeline from the more static information, stuff that's written inside of the catalog and stuff that's saved onto disk. And so with this Kedro session, it makes it so much easier to access this dynamic data in different parts of your pipeline. This is something that we'll have to be exploring in a separate video because it truly is a very huge paradigm shift. So make sure that you sub that scribe and ring that ding if you want to know when we are exploring Kedro sessions. <laughs> And so the next change that we have here is the starter mini Kedro. I love this idea. It's such a cute little idea here. Basically, it allows you to create a bare bones Kedro project with the skeleton of what you need in order to get your data catalog running. And so the data catalog, of course, is a fantastic tool that we use in order to explore, access, and use uh, data sets that we have on disk. And it's the only way currently to easily generate your different data catalog entries for importing them into uh, Jupyter Notebook or any other kind of project that uses certain data. Let's go ahead and try this guy out. Kedro new starter mini Kedro test. And so as you can see here, this mini test really is incredibly bare bones. There's basically nothing in here except one iris data set, as well as the catalog credential logging and parameters YAML files. And this guy is so bare bones that you actually have to use your own Jupyter Notebook. You can't even use Kedro Jupyter Notebook itself. But here we have the example notebook that it comes with, data catalog, conf face, with the configuration loader, you can get the catalog get the data catalog, and then load the catalog itself. So incredibly, incredibly bare bones. But this tiny little piece of code here allows you to leverage a ton of fantastic data sets that are built into Kedro. And so I'm definitely going to be using this if I want to explore some data sets and maintain some uh, configuration. Now the next on this list is that they've upgraded our hooks by adding the data set specs. And so this is actually a movement away from using transformers to modify your data sets. So originally we had transformers if we wanted to change some of the saving and loading behavior for data sets. Now using hooks we have the data set spec that gives you access to before data set loaded, after data set loaded, before data set saved, and after data set saved. You even get access to the data that gets passed through, uh, except of course before the data is loaded. So that's going to be a really great way to make it a much more consistent, more comprehensive uh, hook specification so that you don't have this weird thing where things are half hook half transformer. So we're going to definitely be taking a look at that in a future video. Now this one I am very excited about, Kedro Catalog Create. If you have a registered pipeline, this allows you to automatically generate the data sets for your data catalog that are missing from your catalog based on the inputs and outputs of that pipeline. I'm just going to go ahead and create a brand new pipeline inside of our testing. And for this particular pipeline, we're just going to create a single output called generate me. And we're going to register this using the hooks here. I've registered the pipeline. And now let's test this guy out. Kedro catalog create dash dash pipeline. And it's going to be called simple. 
And what happens, there it goes, the config base catalog dot simple dot yaml file should be available. So config base catalog simple dot yaml, and there it is, the generate me data set. So this makes it way easier to just take whatever data sets are missing from your current project and generate the catalog entries on the fly for you. So that's actually really fantastic. Next, we've added the settings.py and pyproject.toml file to replace the .kedro.yaml file. So no need to have this .kedro.yaml file. We're going to start moving more towards the standard settings.py and pyproject.toml functions uh, files here. And so you can see here, the settings.py is the one that controls your project hooks. And that actually leads into this other thing right here, where they're moving completely away from the project context. And so using the settings.py, this is where you start to instantiate the hooks, how you can disable your hooks, how you can even add in your new session store class. This is something, again, we'll be talking about later. Um, and all the things inside of your settings.py, which I actually quite like uh, in order to just do things as needed. And what's really nice about using it as a, in a Python file is that inside of the project, you can also access this information. And so here, the project context is no longer needed. And in fact, uh, not only have we removed the project context, but registration hooks, the hooks that we have here, are going to be the mandatory and only way to customize your config loader or your data catalog. So this is something that you guys should be noting here is that you are not allowed, you're not allowed, you, you no longer is it supported by Kedro to use Kedro project context inside of the run.py to modify your project behavior. You have to use the hooks.py and you have to create your hook implementations here. I think that this is a, a good step forward because it helps standardize the way that we interface with Kedro. And that standardization, as I always say, is one of the benefits of Kedro. You absolutely know what's going into your project and you absolutely know what's happening with your project. And so by using Kedro, you get more of the standardization, which is the right thing to do. And finally here, the templated config loader now supports Jinja2 template syntax. Oh, that's very nice, along with its original syntax. Uh, and so that way, what we can do is modify the catalog YAML files and have all of these kind of cool for loops and things. So Jinja is a very powerful template, uh, templating library and templating engine, uh, which means that we can have very powerful catalogs in the future. Thanks a lot for joining me. I hope you guys have a fantastic 2021 and I look forward to making more videos on these different topics in the future. So make sure that you guys button that like, sub that scribe, and ring that ding if you want to know when we are pipelining. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.